So section 1.2 talks about algebraic expressions and models. Uh, these are the vocabulary terms from section 1.2. These are all terms that you need to understand the definition of. They will be used in lectures in the class, in discussions in the class, in directions to homework, and in directions to quiz and test problems. So these are all expressions and terms that you need to understand the definition of. They are all highlighted terms in section 1.2 in your text. A big part of section 1.2 is the order of operations. Uh, PEMDAS is an acronym you may have seen in the past to help simplify uh, the concept of remembering the order of operations. So PEMDAS stands for parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So that is the order of operations. If I'm faced with simplifying an expression that combines various operations, I simplify the quantity in the parentheses first. Then I simplify any expressions that are raised to a power. Then I multiply and divide from left to right. So multiplication and division have the same precedence. Simply whichever operation I encounter first as I move from left to right. And finally, addition and subtraction from left to right. Again, addition and subtraction have the same precedence whichever operation I encounter first as I move from left to right is the one I perform first. So in parts A and B, this is a critical example of the order of operations and the significance of applying the order correctly. You can see if I have negative 3 raised to the fourth power and negative 3 is enclosed in parentheses, that the result, positive 81, is different than if I have negative 3 raised to the fourth power without the parentheses where the result is negative 81. And the difference is that in this case, in part A, both the negative sign, in other words, negative 1, and positive 3 are raised to the fourth power. So when I raise negative 1 to the fourth power, that's positive 1. 3 to the fourth power is 81. Positive 1 times 81 is 81. But in this case, the order of operations, there are no parentheses, so the first thing I do is exponents. Well, the exponent here is 3 to the 4th power. So 3 to the 4th power is 81. And then I multiply times the negative 1. 81 times negative 1 is negative 81. So there's a very significant case here when I consider the order of operations. So pause the video now and try number 30. Check your answer. See how you did. So order of operations. Parentheses first. Negative 3 plus 7 is positive 4. Exponents next. Positive 4 squared would be 16. Multiplication. 3 times 16 would be 48. Addition. 48 and negative 6 would be 42. So now pause the video and try number 31. Order of operations, no parentheses, no exponents. So first thing will be multiplication division from left to right. 8 times 12 is 96. Divided by 4 would be 24. 24 minus 24 is 0. Pause the video and try number 32. Check your answer. Uh, parentheses first. 2 plus 6 is 8. There are no exponents. So multiplication division from left to right. 16 divided by 8 is 2. Times 10 would be 20. So on page 14, we'll, tr we'll go over these next uh, seven problems. So number 19, 4 to the 4th power. You can pause the video and try this one. Four to the 4th power is 256. Negative 2 to the 5th power, number 21. You can pause the video and try this one. Negative
negative 2 to the fifth power is negative 32. Number 22, pause the video and try this one. Again, the answer is negative 32. And notice the significance here. We saw in a previous example that the parentheses change the final result. The difference here is that the exponent is an odd value, fifth power. So 2 to the fifth power is 32 times negative 1 to the fifth power. Negative 1 to the fifth power is negative 1. So the final result is negative 32. Negative 2 to the fifth power is negative 32. So the resulting answer will only differ in this scenario if the exponent is even. And finally, number 35. Pause the video and try this one. By substituting negative 1 for x in this expression, you should, should yield a result of positive 125. So the next three values, so the next three problems, you can pause the video and try number 36. So when you substitute 5 for x, you should get a result of 25. Pause the video and try 43. When you substitute negative 4 for x and 9 for y, you should yield the result negative 5 thirteenths. Pause the video and try number 46. And when you substitute negative 3 for x and positive 3 for y, you should real yield the result negative 5 thirds. So the next two problems on page 15, numbers 50 and 52. So number 50, simplify the expression. Pause the video and try number 50. So if I distribute the 5 and distribute the negative 3, I yield this expression, and then I combine like terms to get 2n squared plus 11n. Pause the video and try number 52. Distributing the 8 and the negative 2 gives me this expression. And then I combine like terms to get 10y minus 10x. So finally, choose the two expressions that represent each situation. So there are three word problems. Um, and for example, for number one, two of these expressions would correspond to problem number one and setting up the problem. So you can pause the video and try number one. So I can see that for number one, if I let x represent the wholesale price and 3x, therefore, is the selling price, I get the two expressions, 3x minus 1.45x and 1.55x, which were here and here on the list. And 1.55x is simply simplifying this expression, combining those two terms, the difference of 3x and 1.45x. So you can pause the video and try number two. And for number two, if I set up the problem, I'll get these two expressions, 4x plus 9 times the quantity 1 minus x. x is the number of hours jogging. 1 minus x is the number of hours walking. And if I distribute the 9 and combine like terms, I'll get the expression 9 minus 5x. So these two expressions, 9 minus 5x, 4x plus 9 times 1 minus x. And that makes number 3 pretty easy. Only two left. So for number 3, a room that is 10 feet longer than it is wide, uh, 
x times the quantity x plus 10, or if I distribute the x, x squared plus 10x.